everyone. Welcome to the Kino Yoga Show. I'm Kino and you're watching Miami TV HD. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, if you're watching this and you have any questions or if you have any comments, be sure to tweet that at me before the show next week with the hashtag Kino Yoga Miami TV and I'll be sure to get to your questions. So we're going to start off each episode with some viewer questions. So the first viewer question today is kind of a personal question and the, the person who sent in the question asked if I've ever measured my body fat in their index because they said that it looks like I've got no body fat. First of all, really appreciate the compliment. Thanks for that. I totally have body fat. See, I've got, you know, you could pinch some right there, for example. And the idea of yoga, anyhow, it does give you a thin and flexible body, but the idea is not so much to be attached to those particular physical results. I've actually never had my body fat measured. Um, I rarely even weigh myself, to be honest with you. I feel like, you know, these things are numbers. So, and if you weigh 105 pounds or 100 150 pounds, what does it really matter? If you feel good in your own skin, you can be super skinny and be really awkward in terms of your body. I think it's way more important that you feel good. And the yoga practice is all about feeling good from the inside out. So I've never, I've never gotten that body fat measured index or, 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 or figured out you know, exactly what that proportion is. I'm not too strict about stuff like that. Instead, I feel like the yoga practice helps me live a really balanced life. And in that balanced life, it includes acceptance of myself and my body for who I am. Now I did, before I was doing yoga, I went to the gym and I was really kind of focused on physical results and I totally get that if you're, if you're there. I was really, I was doing that for a while, but I felt like for me, the more I focused on physical results and this sort of thing, the, you know, like calories and how many calories I'm burning and this sort of thing, the, the less results I actually attained. And when I started doing yoga, it was this big cleansing process where, wow, I just let go of all of that. I let go of dieting. I let go of, um, you know, following any particular, you know, fad diet or something like this. I tried them all actually before I started yoga. I did like the Atkins diet. I did the no carb diet. It's kind of the same thing. I did, you know, I grew up with my parents doing Nutrisystem and all sorts of crazy, crazy diets like that. And I felt like, you know, I tried them all. And when I came to yoga, I really wanted to just be me. And what's really interesting about that is if you trust who you are, and you trust that you've been, you're perfect, you know, you're a miracle, just the fact that you're alive. This is one of the most, um, you know, esoteric and also real grounded benefits of the yoga practice. If you trust that, then you can also trust your body to be balanced in and of itself. Now that of course doesn't mean that you should just eat a bunch of, you know, waffles and french fries just because your body says, mmm, those are yummy. The idea is to create balance from the inside out. And if you watched the episode last week, you know that I'm a vegetarian, so I'm not, you know, I'm not super strict with, within that, but I do follow that more for the moral and ethical reasons of not wanting to harm other beings and out of my love for animals than anything else. So I hope that's a reasonable answer to your question and that you're inspired to do the yoga practice and be who you really are and get real comfortable in your skin. Now the second viewer question that I'm going to start off with this week is asking about what kind of environment is ideal to do the yoga practice. There, the, This viewer was asking, should I make the room really hot so I can get more flexible? Should I light a lot of incense to create the perfect mood? Mood. Now, what's most important about that is that um, I love that this viewer is interested in creating the sacred space of yoga and really doing it properly. So if you're going to do your practice, do it like this. Set a ritual around it. Set a sacred space. Do that and respect it. Don't schedule other appointments and don't, you know, don't flake out on yourself. Adhere to that ritual. Now, let's talk about the room. You don't want the room to be too hot. If the room's too hot, you'll start to lose your power and your energy. Now there are people who are naturally real flexible. If you take that natural flexible person and put them in the really hot room, they're gonna get way too flexible. And then the other side of it is if the room is too cold, you're not gonna warm up properly. So you don't want the room too cold, you don't want the room too hot. You want the room um, just you know, a comfortable temperature. Pretty much here in Miami, all you gotta do is turn the air conditioning off and close the doors or open a window and you got the perfect temperature. If you're watching and you're in some of those northern in climates where you experience, you know, like real winter and there's snow and things like that outside, definitely you want to heat the room. I would say somewhere between 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit is probably the perfect temperature to do the practice with air and ventilation. So if you want to light some incense, you want to get some natural incense, not something that's really toxic and not something that's really overwhelming because breathing is so important to the yoga practice. You want to be able to inhale and let oxygen be in the inhalation.
meditation rather than just the smoke of the incense. Now, I like to light maybe one incense, maybe about half an hour before I practice so the smoke is cleared, and then a candle. So the candle for me creates the vibrancy of the flame and creates the, the sacred space of yoga. So if you're going to do a home practice, create that space with your intention and follow it through with some actions. If possible, practice in the same spot every day so you're not you know, just wandering around the room and then that spot will be your little yoga spot and you'll put energy in there every time you practice. All right. So today's class, in terms of the postures that we're going to be looking at, is headstand. Now, wow, headstand. Mm. Some of you at home might be thinking, wow, headstand. You're going to stand on your head? You might actually do it today. So put your doubts aside and join me in the exploration of headstand. Now, when I first started the practice, I was so bad at headstand. I was terrible. I fell over every day. I crashed into the floor. I crashed into other people. I crashed into the wall. I left a dent in the wall by kicking my feet up so hard. So if you feel like, wow, headstand would be impossible. I feel you. Go on the journey. Let it take the time it takes. Don't stress out about attaining the goal and just do the work. So we're not going to try to bust out a headstand right from the beginning. Mm -mm -mm. We're going to take it nice and easy. Build the shoulder strength, the coordination of breath with movement, and then slowly, slowly build all the way up. All right. Hope you're excited. Headstand is one of the most foundational postures in the whole yoga practice. It has deep spiritual benefits uh, that create calmness in the body and it create a meditative focus that turns the mind inward. So hopefully at the end of the practice today, we might be feeling that. All right, so in order to start, we're actually going to do this on our hands and knees, all right? So coming onto your hands and knees, we're working with the shoulders, all right? Now take your hands forward. They don't have to be off of the mat. They can be right on top of your yoga mat. That's fine. Um, I, somehow, my, I like my knees on my yoga mat, but this will, you'll be solved if you just do this forward. Uh, forward from your yoga mat. Okay, now from here we're going to work on activating the rotator cuff muscles. Make sure that your hands are shoulder width apart, your knees are hips width apart, and then spin your elbow joints forward. So just watch that with me for a moment. Spin your elbow joints forward and then exhale. Wrap your hands down and press the elbows into the ground. Melt into the floor. Activate latissimus dorsi and get your shoulders nice and strong and inhale, take your shoulders forward over your hands. Good. And let's do it again. All right. Elbows, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now, I really start to feel this activating the rotator cuff muscles, but you, it's just kind of easy to cheat on this one. Don't worry. We're going to make it harder, and then you're going to really feel the shoulders working. All right. Inhale. Let's take it up and forward. Let's just do that one more time. I'm feeling like this is too easy. Maybe you agree with me, or maybe you feel it in the shoulders more than I do. All right. Inhale. Let's take it all the way up. Okay. If you're ready to make it harder, I'm ready to make it harder. You can only, we got to get those shoulders working if we're going to do headstand. Curl your toes on press back to downward facing dog. Here we are in downward facing dog. Let your head relax for a moment. Let's take a few breaths here. Suck your belly strongly in and then let's look forward to the hands. All right, we're ready to turn up that activation on the shoulders. We're going to do it one by one. Lean over to the left and then melt your right elbow into the ground. Lean into your right elbow and then let's melt the left elbow into the ground. Keep your pelvic floor nice and firm. Press through the arms and now let's take the arms up. Straighten the left arm. Lean to the left. Mm, straighten the right arm. Good. Did you feel in the shoulders? I think we could do it one more time. Let's start off with the left. Left one goes down, melt that elbow down. Right one goes down, melt that elbow down. You're starting to feel the shoulders? I am a little bit. I still think we could do a little bit more intense. Lean over to the left, take it up. Lean over to the right and take it up. Let's press back to downward dog. Let your shoulders relax for a moment. Nice and steady. And now, are you ready for the real challenge? We're gonna go for both. Many people find this real challenging, but this is super important for headstand. You don't want the weight of headstand to be crushing into your head, you want it to be in the shoulders. So take the hands, take the palms down, shoulders a little forward, and this is the test. Are you ready? Okay, do it with me. Squeeze your elbows together and melt into the ground. And then inhale, squeeze your elbows together, melt all the way up. Do not let your elbows pop out to the side. Okay, we got to do it again. Squeeze those elbows together. All right, and then inhale all the way up. I'm starting to feel it. I hope you are too. You want to feel that right here, right underneath the shoulder blade, right through the deltoid. Okay, one more time. And then exhale as you melt those elbows into the ground. Let's hold it down this time for a couple of breaths. 
tuck under the tailbone and then lean forward onto your big toes. And again, we're gonna stay here. Really get those shoulders burning. Press into the ground, feel that nice activation. This is gonna make you steady and strong. And then sink back through the base of your big toes and straighten the arms. Okay, let's come onto the knees. Child's pose, we're gonna rest. As you're in child's pose, I'm gonna squeeze your knees together and sink through your hips, all right? Then reach your hands forward and relax. All right, so it should be easy to get that relaxed moment. This little tucked under position, the child's pose position, is gonna help you get the pivot into your hip joints, which is so crucial for headstand. And it'll also give your shoulders a little moment to relax, all right? So you can just leave that head down, soft breathing, sink through the hips. Not too much rest, otherwise you might get cold, so let's pop right on up. All right, come onto your hands and knees. And this time, we're gonna move into the headstand position. So sink back into that half child's pose. Grip the outside of your arms, and this is how we're gonna check the distance, all right? So headstand is all about creating a tripod. So we're gonna create a tripod. Now, when we're doing headstand, you want the very flat part that's on the top of your head to be on the ground. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But for right now, let's grip the fingertips. Notice that my palms are open, they're not closed, so you want that open palm. Now from here, pivot forward, and then press through the shoulders and let your back pop up and arch. And then we're gonna test this out, test out our tripod. Exhale, put the top of the head on the ground. And make Make sure that when you're here, your shoulders are nice and strong. So if you collapse the shoulders, you're going to hurt your neck and headstand. So you want to make sure the shoulders are nice and strong. And then let's take it all the way up. All right, let's do that one more time. Put the top of the head down. And then let's pop the top of the head up. All right, how's that feeling? Hope it's all right. Let's see if we can increase the intensity on that. Curl your toes under and we'll prepare. All right, so every time we work on the alignment, we got to increase the intensity. You'll get stronger this way and your mind will also get stronger. Stay steady and calm. Stand the legs up. You should feel the shoulders pressing. And then exhale, place the top of the head down as you pivot forward. Stay there for a moment, feel the shoulders strong, and then take it all the way up. And then let's just do that again. Top of the head reaches down. Stay here for a moment, and this time walk the left foot. Walk the right foot. Pivot forward again, so you press through the elbows. Keep space between your deltoids and your ears, and then let's walk back, place the knees down, and child's pose to rest. Make sure you rest for a moment in child's pose just to let the blood equalize. If you pop up at a headstand too quick, you could get a head rush and you feel a little dizzy. We don't want you to feel dizzy. Now, are you, uh, the other thing that's important is when you're doing headstand, you wanna make sure that you have the flat part that's on the top of your head on the ground. I mentioned that before, and now let's just get real clear on what that is because I want you to do it properly, okay? So, in a comfortable seated position, take your hand, your right hand, and place it right on top of your head. Now, imagine, find that flat part. My head has a pretty strong flat part. See if you can find that too. If you've got you know, a very egg-shaped head, it might be hard to find that flat part. Now you'll know you found the flat part because now when you take both hands and press down, you should feel that there's no pressure in your neck. The weight is just distributed along the center line of the body. And you want to imagine that you could balance like 100 pounds right on top of your head. If you've, if you've ever been to India, I've been to India a lot. There's, there are women who carry you know, their full load of whatever they're carrying right on the top of their head. So you want to have that same position. That's where you want your head to be in headstand. Now, to make sure that you understand where not to put your head, if you take your hand to the front of your forehead and press upward, you can feel that it's already starting to crane your neck and your neck muscles get tense. Do not try to do headstand in that position. Then take your hand to the back of your head and then push back and you'll feel, oh, again, the neck is straining. No neck straining in headstand. Find that sweet spot in the middle. Give it two hands and get nice and stable there. That's where you want to be in headstand. Okay, now we have the head position. We have the shoulder position. What are we missing? We're missing the core of the body. So we need to activate the core. We need to engage our abdominal muscles and learn how to squeeze everything into the center. So here's the best posture for that. Pop yourself over to the right. Lean gently back. And then activate from your core. Pivot through your hip joints. Hug yourself into a little ball and take the arms straight out ahead. We're going to stay here for five. It's going to burn. Let it burn. Use your abdominal muscles. This is how the yoga practice can really bring the strength into the core of your body. Your mind. If your mind wavers, if you start to think that it's hard, you'll start to feel like you want to quit. Do not quit. Now we're going to take it up a level. Inhale as you straighten the legs and keep them as close to your body as you can. 
plan. Stay here for a few breaths. You need the flexibility and the strength. The yoga practice, oh, it's all about balance, right? So we have the balance between strength and flexibility in every posture, in every moment. Now, back to the knees bent. Hug yourself into a tight little ball. Squeeze it in, squeeze it in, squeeze it all the way in. Then, cross your feet from here. We're gonna release the shoulders. Step forward and step back exhale bend your elbows come down into a push-up position and then inhale roll forward to upward facing exhale roll back to downward facing from downward facing dog press your knees onto the ground we're going to start working on headstand now elbows press check your distance after you check the distance maybe five or ten times you might want to just know where your elbows are there my elbows are not getting any longer my arms aren't getting any longer I might like that I might like to be a little taller but my bones are pretty much gonna stay in place from now on so now get your hands open palm and create that tripod pivot forward through the knees press through the elbows then exhale place the top of the head down get nice and cozy and set up there curl your toes stand those hips up Walk, walk, walk. Now, press through the elbows as though you could lift your head off the ground and then take your left knee and squeeze it into your chest just like that little ball that we did on the ground. Point your left toe up to the ceiling. Nice and steady. Don't waver. Let your mind be calm, centered, and focused. Find yourself gazing right at your mat and then let's take the left foot down. Now find that right foot and squeeze the right knee into your chest. Be sure that the knee is in the chest. Always, usually in a class, whenever I say to pull the knee into the chest, someone lifts the leg up here. Don't lift the leg up here, pull it into your chest. Why would you lift your leg? Because you're thinking about doing a headstand. Right now we're thinking about squeezing into the core. Now here's the real test. Pull your left knee into your chest and then inhale, pivot forward. And here we go, half headstand. Do not try to come all the way up. In fact, if you're a little afraid of this posture, go to a wall to make sure that you don't go all the way over. Press through the shoulders and we're just gonna stay halfway balanced. Pull it into your core, activate your abdominal muscles and then slowly one foot down, the other foot down. Step it all the way back and relax. Child's pose. So if you're afraid of falling, that's a reasonable fear, but it's a fear that you gotta get over. If you're afraid of falling, probably you're afraid of going too far forward. I had to fall over every day for like 10 months before I could find the balance. You can go to a wall for a little while to make sure that you don't go over, but more important, if you're calm and balanced in your approach, then no problem, you'll find the balance. So let's see if we can get all the way up into a headstand. Wow, you believe you can do it? You need to add that missing element of faith. If you could do all the movements that we did so far, 100%, you can do this. You just gotta believe in yourself. Let's put all those pieces together. Okay, so starting off with the elbows down, let's check the distance. Then interlock the fingers, palms down, elbow press. Remember your deltoids, these muscles, they gotta be firm. I didn't have this muscle before I started yoga. It felt like it was atrophy, it didn't exist. I really developed that over my whole practice. Then, press, press, head, top of the head to the ground. Start to believe, don't get stressed, don't psych yourself out, all right? Just walk in. Don't try too hard, don't try too little. Now, send the right knee into the chest, and if you want to, this time you can give a little jump and jump your hips over the foundation of your arms. Here we are, half balance. Do not go further until you're calm and balanced here. You gotta make sure, what's your name? Do you know your name? Do you know the date? Do you know where you live? If you can answer all those questions and you're ready to go up in headstand, point your toes. Tuck the tailbone a little as you move the hips towards the center line, squeeze your thighs towards each other and slowly, 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 slowly find headstand. Do not allow yourself to, to arch your back so you don't want to be there. Tuck your tailbone under and find the center line of the body and we'll just hang out here for a few breaths. Keep the balance nice and steady, and if you're near the wall, try not to touch the wall. Reach up through your toes so the legs are super firm, and then gently bend the knees, squeeze it into your body, pivot through the hip joints, press, stretch your legs out, go down, and child's pose. All right, let it relax. Now some people ask me, um, 
Is it okay to kick up with one leg at a time into headstand? I recommend you don't try that because you're going to kick up with a leg that's a little more flexible and it's really like it's a high likelihood that you're going to tweak your back or throw yourself over with too much force. If you do it in the way that we just did now, you'll be able to really activate through the core of the body and you probably will not fall and you'll actually do the headstand. Okay, let's come all the way back and we're going to do one more activity that's going to connect your shoulders in through the core of the body. You need to have a towel, all right? Um, if you are practicing on a carpet or in a carpeted room, you, can, you might be able to do this activity just on the carpet, but if you've got a wood floor, you wanna make sure to do this with a towel. Now, you're going to fold your mat into half the distance, so you have a half mat. So you gotta make a little construction, it's like a little construction project, okay? Then, open up the towel, place it down here. Okay, you might be wondering, what is gonna happen with this towel and this yoga mat? All right, so here we are. You're gonna curl the toes under and come down onto the elbows, make your tripod, and then press through the elbows. So you press up, up, support the neck, exhale down, place the top of the head right on the ground, press through the elbows, then press as far back as you can, firming the abdominal muscles, squeeze it all the way in, curl the toes under, drag your feet forward, press it over, push back like you're pushing from your abdominal muscles, roll over your toes, drag that towel forward, roll back, push through your toes, Roll, drag, do not let your shoulders waver. We're gonna do that two more times. Push all the way back, over your toes, drag forward. One more time, push back, feel it, nice and steady. Suck in the belly, and now over your toes, drag forward, and drag so much forward so you catch a little air. And then exhale down. And let's just do that last little bit one more time. Go back, roll over your toes. Drag so much forward so you catch a little air. Now, go halfway, stay. So the difference is we just did that with straight legs. So this is a little harder, okay? So after you find the balance halfway, hang out here. Ask yourself, do you know your name? Do you know where you're from? Are you comfortable? Are you breathing? And if you can answer yes to all those questions, tuck the tailbone under, squeeze your thighs towards each other, and point your toes up to the ceiling. Reach all the way outward and press, press through the shoulders. Nice and steady. Keep your gaze down at the mat at a single point. After a few breaths here, let's come down the same way. Roll, roll, roll through the hips, toes down, sink it back, knees down, and child's pose all the way down. Let yourself relax nice and steady. And then let's come back onto the knees and we're going to rebuild the mat. So take the towel out and unroll your mat all the way over. That's a great little tool to coordinate your core strength with the upper body strength that headstand really takes. Sometimes you can have all the pieces. Like you can be really strong in your core, you can be really strong in the shoulders, but you can't connect all the pieces. That little exercise will help your brain and your body really coordinate. Um, and you know, you'll be able to eventually do the headstand. So if you're working on that lift up into headstand with straight legs, you need to also develop a certain level of flexibility. So we're going to work on that now too. So stretch your legs all the way out in front and this posture is called Paschimottanasana or a forward bend. All right. So squeeze your thighs in towards each other. We're going to do this today in a way that builds strength, not just flexibility. So be sure that you know that you can modify each posture and approach it differently for different purposes. So for right now, keep the belly nice and sucked in. You're going to take your hand right to the low belly and then from here you're going to lift your torso over your hand. This is a really good um, way to check out what's happening in your digestive system. If there's a lot of stuff down there that you can't reach over and that's sort of in the way to your forward bend. That's a good indication that you might you know, benefit from some cleansing, that you might be able to get a little more space deep down in there. Then release your hands, but keep that space, okay? From here, hands on the ground. Pivot through your hips. Walk. Walk, walk your hands. Now, point your toes. So this is the same position as that lift up into headstand that we just did. So we're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing the thighs. Reach, reach, and reach, all right? Hold on nice and tight. Squeeze the lower abdominal muscles into the body and hold. Now from here, grip your fingertips and pull back. And that's that same motion to lift up. Walk, walk, walk and walk. And we're going to do that again. Point your toes, squeeze your thighs into each other, grip the fingertip, pull back. 
You wanna stop right about middle of your calf. Walk, 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 and walk. So again, we're coordinating the core of the body into the strength of headstand. Grip the fingertips, roll back. Good, now bend your knees. We're gonna do one more headstand. Now we should be able to make everything really, really come into play. So, onto your hands and knees. Now from here, let's see if we can coordinate everything that we've been doing up till now. Spin your elbows forward. Exhale, place the elbows down. All right, notice I didn't check my distance now because again, the elbows, they didn't change position. Interlock the fingers, press through the elbows and exhale, top of the head down. Now, press up, walk, walk, walk. And this time without the drag, Press through the elbows, suck in the belly, and pivot forward. And the moment that you feel the weight pivoting forward, press through the elbows to pick yourself to that half balance. Firm the abdominal muscles, tuck the tailbone, and roll all the way up. Find your balance, steady, don't overarch. Find the center line of the body, and now from here, we're gonna test it out. Suck the belly in and exhale, lower as low as you can, potentially touching the floor, and then inhale, almost like a sit-up that you're doing in the headstand position. This is gonna test your balance, it's gonna test your limits. Who do you think you can be if you can do that the whole movement? Flow through it nice and steady. Exhale down, inhale, use your core, Take it all the way up. Use the back muscles. Use the core muscles. Let's do one more of those. And pivot right through the hips. If you can do this movement completely fluid, then this will help all of your inversions, not just headstand. Hold it steady. Hold, hold, hold. Point up through your toes and pivot through the hips all the way down and knees down. Now, if you felt like, oh my God, that was impossible. That was like magic. I totally feel you. That's what I felt like first time I did headstand. That's what it felt like for me when I saw someone doing that. But if you practice, it took, remember it took me 10 months to balance and headstand. Do these techniques every day, and then you'll feel the, you know, the benefits of headstand really starting to accrue. You'll get more calm, your shoulders will get stronger. And the day that I balanced and headstand, it was like, wow, I felt like I could be more emotionally balanced as well. So you might find something similar. Now, if, you're, if that was all easy for you, and you want to take headstand to another level, there's a perfect posture that comes after, which is a forearm balance known in Sanskrit as pincha mayurasana. So let's see if we can work on a little bit of those principles. Now this is harder. So for any of you guys with strong shoulders, you might feel like mm, you're ready for that extra challenge. So here we go. Instead of the head on the ground, the head will remain off the ground. Ooh, we can almost have like a dramatic drum roll that would follow. Okay, so here we go. We walk and walk and walk, press through the elbows, just like we did in headstand, pivot forward and see if Oh, it might be possible to lift up off the ground in the same way. Now, some of you might think, why is she showing off? You know, what's that about? But this is where you can go. It's meant for inspiration. And for those of you who thought headstand was easy, you'll know there's always a place deeper that you can take it. And then pivot right through the hips, press through the elbows, down, 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 and child's pose. Good, so hopefully that was fun to try. Not deflating. And when you begin to practice headstand or more regularly, you'll get more confidence. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about was how to fall. I recommend you don't fall. I think that's probably the best solution. But um, finding the vertical line through the body can be a little hard. So use the wall, get someone to spot you, and of course, learn how to fall. Maybe we'll take a look at falling in another class. That was good for today. Curl your feet under and let's lie down and release the shoulders a little bit. That was a lot of shoulder work, okay? So lying down from here. Nice and easy, you're going to bend your knees, take your hands right near your heels, lift your hips forward, roll, roll, under, interlock the fingers, and easy, simple bridge, all right? So this is just helping the pec muscles and the deltoids release, rolling the shoulders nice and towards each other, and after a few breaths, let's sink it down. Just again to release the shoulders, pull that right knee into the chest, pivot over, and now to release the pec muscle all the way over to the side and easy gaze towards the right. We won't stay here too long, just enough to feel the activation, release through the fingers, pull it back in, and down. We're gonna do the other side. Left knee into your chest, 
twist it over, this easy reclining twist, align your hand with your shoulder and release the whole torso. Make sure the pec muscles release, make sure the deltoids release, you don't want any residual tension in your body after all that upper body work, connection through the core that headstand's really about. Okay, let's come all the way back in and stretch out your leg. Roll the shoulders open and close your eyes. This is what it's really all about, this relaxation at the end. The more you use your whole body, the more that it will relax at the end. So whenever you feel your body working in the yoga practice, don't think, oh, I'm doing something wrong. Think, wow, the relaxation at the end is going to be so good. Let a soft smile come over your lips. Know that you did really good work today, that you gave it your all, that you're building the foundation of a stronger, more happy you inside of the yoga practice. After a few moments of relaxation, you'll notice that your breath is softer and more refined and your mind and the quality of the thoughts is more free. With that gentle awareness like the seed of your own little lotus garden inside of your mind sort of being watered by the practice and eventually coming to bloom, wiggle your fingers and toes and bend the knees and the elbows. Pause here for a moment, let your eyes open, let a soft smile come over your lips. Pull the knees into your chest and roll over to the side, supporting the neck and all the way back up to a comfortable seated position. Good. So remember that headstand's a lifelong journey. Really the whole practice is a lifelong journey. You never want to um, go for instantaneous results. This is one thing that I've really learned from the yoga practice. If you're humble and you're willing to put in the work, meaning if you're willing to work on the tools, the foundation, rather than needing to achieve the result right away, then everything is possible. You don't know how long it's going to take you to balance on headstand. You might have done it today. You might do it tomorrow, but it might also take you a long time like me. It might have take you 10 months or maybe even longer you might struggle with the posture know though that if you struggle it's going to be so much more meaningful to you when you do actually attain that posture everything that is difficult for you in the yoga practice is your are your possibility is your possibility for transformation don't run away from difficulty don't run away from strength the deep work that can make you stronger that can make you a, a more healthy more balanced person once you'll be able to find that through the vehicle of the postures you'll be able to know who you really are you'll be so much more strong than you ever imagined possible, so much more peaceful than you ever imagined possible. The yoga practice, at its best, gives you the tools to be exactly who you are, who you were meant to be, to attain your dreams, to realize your dreams in this life. So have faith and keep practicing every day. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.